Okay, so now what I'm going to do is show you how to use the AWS SDK. And so uh, to do that, uh, we're going to need some kind of IDE, um, a, a basically code editor. And so we had looked at GitPods, which is a third party service, and that's fine. But let's take a look at Cloud9, because that is built into AWS. So if I just type in Cloud9 here and go over to IDE, I'm going to launch myself a new environment. So I'll hit Create. I'm going to say uh, My SDK Environment. ENV, if you, if you have a hard time typing environment like me. And we have some options. So create an EC2 instance for direct access, create it via systems manager, run a remote with SSH. I'm gonna leave it as the default. Then we have the option to choose what size. I wanna leave it on T2 Micro because that is the free tier. Then we're gonna scroll on down. We have Amazon Linux 2, Linux AMI. I'm gonna stick with uh, Amazon Linux 2 and we can have it turn off after 30 minutes. A great option for us here. And we'll go ahead and hit next and we'll hit create environment. And so we're gonna to have to wait a little bit for this to launch, it'll take a few minutes. As that is going, let's go to Google, type in AWS SDK um, to get to the main page. And so the idea here is that there are a bunch of different languages you can use, C++, Go, Java, JavaScript.net, Node.js, PHP, Python, and Ruby. Uh, and so I'm a really big fan of Ruby. I've been using Ruby since 2005, and so that's what we're gonna do it in. It's also really easy to use, and I, uh, it's a really great language. So, um, you know, down below, it's just showing you that there's all these different things. But if we go down to the SDK here, and we click on Ruby, well, we have examples where we have the developer guide, the API reference. And so this tells you how to get started. Even here, it's saying like, hey, go get started with Cloud9, which is great as well, I suppose. Um, and so here, it might show you how to install it. Um, and when we open up the API references, this is what it looks like. So a lot of times when I want to do something, I know it's like, I want to do something with S3. So I scroll on down here and I look for S3, right? And then I just kind of like uh, scroll around and look, you know what I mean? Sometimes you have to expand it, go into the client. Every API is a slightly different. So you do have to kind of figure out how to navigate that. I'm actually under S3 right now. So I'm looking for the client. And I just know this from memory that this is where it is. So first you create yourself a client and then you can do API operations. So if I wanted to like list buckets, I just search the word list and I just scroll on down and there it is. I click into that and I have an example of how to list a bucket. So I'm gonna go back to Cloud9 and it is ready and it started in dark mode. Um, if yours is not in dark mode, which really honestly, why wouldn't you want dark mode? Um, if we go up to, I think it's like file, where is it? Uh, preferences here. Gotta click the Cloud9 option. And I'm just seeing if it like remembers my settings. I really like two, two soft tabs here, but uh, there should be something for themes down below. And so um, that doesn't seem like that's it. There used to be like a, oh, here it is. If you go here and just choose like whatever you want, I'm on jet dark here. And so if it's on classic light or something you don't like, you can fix that there. Um, but I'm just going to go here and just fiddle with my settings because I really like to use Vim uh, keys. I don't recommend this if you are uh, uh, to change this if you are not a programmer, but I'm just going to change it so that I can type here efficiently. So I'm just looking for the option here and they moved it on me. Where did they move it? It would probably be like key bindings. Ah, Vim mode. There we go. Again, don't do that. This is just for me so I can uh, move around in a different way. So what I want to do, and by the way, it looks like this default screen, we could have just changed it here. I just clicked through all that for nothing. It was here the entire time. But um, what we need is we need to make sure that we have our credentials. So if we type in AWS um, uh, S3 LS, that's like my sanity check that I always like to do to make sure I have credentials. Notice that we didn't have to set up any credentials. It was already on this machine, which was really nice. And so I'm going to create a new file here. And it's okay if you don't know anything about Ruby, we're just going to have fun here and just follow along. So I'm gonna do example.rb. I'm gonna make sure Ruby's installed by doing Ruby hyphen V. So it is installed, which is great. Uh, you need a gem file. So we'll say new gem file here. And if we go back to the installation guide, uh, we need the gem SDK here. Actually, I'm gonna look at how to generate a gem file. Gem file, because there's some stuff that goes to the top of those files like this here. I think we just need this line here. So I'm just gonna grab that. Whoops, paste that in. Allow, good. And uh, I 
you can do gem AWS SDK that will install everything, but uh, we only want to work with S3. And so this is going to vary based on each language, but I know that if we type in S3, we'll just get S3 and that's all we really need. And so once we have that, what we'll need to do is use a bundle install. So we're going to make sure we're in the correct directory. I'm going to type in LS down below. Notice the gem file is there. Uh, and by the way, if the fonts are too small, I should probably bump those up. Let's see how we can do that. Uh, editor, size, font, user settings. Good luck trying to find it, eh? Um, pro project, no. You'd think it'd have to be under user settings, right? Ah, here it is. Okay, so um, this is for probably the editor. So we'll go to 18 here. Co code editor here. I'm, I'm trying to find the one for the terminal, probably over here. There we go. Much easier, okay. So notice we have example.rb and gem file, so we're in the correct directory. Make sure I save that. I'm gonna type in bundle install, and that's going to install the gems. Give it a moment there, it's going to fetch. Notice that it installed um, a, the uh, AWS SDK S3 and everything that it was dependent on. And so now if we go over to our example.rb file, Really when you're coding for the cloud, you can pretty much copy paste everything. So over here, we found this code here for S3 list buckets. Um, and so I'm gonna go ahead and paste that on in, okay? And I know it looks really complicated, but we can quickly simplify this. So I know that this is just the output, so I don't need that, okay? And in Ruby, you don't need parentheses or curlies if, uh, if you don't have any things there. And so all I need to do is define a client. So if I click, uh, if I go to the top here of this file, I think we're in the client right now. Go all the way to the top, all the way to the top here. That's what we need, okay? And so I'm gonna paste that in. Now uh, we can set the region here. So I'm gonna say US East one, right? And then you'd have your credentials. Um, because the credentials are on the machine in the um, uh, credentials file, they're gonna auto load here, I believe. So I don't think I need to set them. So I'm just gonna take that out here for a second. Okay, and I can do this if I want. This is just slightly different syntax. It might be easier to read if I do it this way for you. Okay, and I don't need double client there. So we have the client. I like to name this like S3 so I know what it is. And I put puts for the response. I'm gonna do inspect. And so puts is like print, okay? And so now if I type in bundle exec, Let's just make sure that it's in the context of our bundler file, Ruby example.rb. Um, we have a syntax error on this line here, unexpected thing here. Oh, it's because of this. It's because I commented out. So I'm just gonna do curly parentheses, comment out here. Okay. Actually to make it a bit easier, I'm just going to bring this down like this. Okay, and we'll paste that there. Okay. And we'll try this again. Uninitialized constants AWS. Oh yeah, we have to require it. So we have to require AWS SDK S3, I think. We'll hit up. And uh, we got a struct back. So it is working. We are getting an object back. If we want to play around with this a bit more, I'm just gonna install another gem called pry. Pry allows us to um, inspect code. So we're gonna do bundle install. And I'm gonna go back to Ruby here. I'm gonna put a binding pry in here. And then if I hit up and I do bundle exec ruby example.rb, um, I installed it, right? Bundle install, yes. Undefined method pry. Oh, because I have to require it again. Bad habit here. Okay, we'll hit up. And so now I have an interactive shell and I can kind of analyze that object. So we have a response. So if I type in RSP here, I have the structure object. I can type in buckets here. Okay, and it's showing me a bucket. I can give it, get its name. Um, oh, I think it's an array. So I think I'd say like, I'd say like zero here, or I could say first. This is just the, how the Ruby language works. We say name, I get the name, creation date. Okay, so you get the idea, whatever you wanna do, you know, you search for it. You just say, I wanna delete a bucket, I wanna create a bucket, right? And you look for it, so I say create bucket here. 
I click on this and I can see the options and they are always really good about giving me an example. And then down below, they always tell you all the parameters that you have there. So that's how the SDK works. Uh, but yeah, the credentials were uh, soft loaded here, but you could easily provide them yourself. I should just show you that before anything else, just because there's some variations there. Um, and I'm just trying to look for it because it is a separate code. So you could do this. This is one way of doing it. So you could do it separate from the code. So if you only wanted to configure it once, right? Cause you could, you could have a lot of clients. You wouldn't want to keep on like for each client, you wouldn't want to put region in every time. So I could take this and put this right here. Okay. And this is the file here where we have the credentials. So this would be our, um, our access key and our ID. And so you never want to put your code directly just in here. So if I open up, if you go cat, you, you would never want to do this, but I'm just going to show as an example here, uh, credentials. Oops. I got to get out of this exit. AWS credentials. Oh, did they not even show it on this machine? Which would be smart. We wouldn't really want to see our credentials here. Uh, I'm going to hit up, say LS. Oh, no, it's there. Okay. Cat, whoops. <laughs> credentials. There it is. Okay. So, you know, if we look here, we can see that there are credentials set. It's a little bit different. We have this like session token. I guess it's to make sure that this expires over time. But if I was to take these, okay, and I was just to paste them in here. That's one way you would do it. Um, you never, ever want to do this ever, 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 ever. You never want to do this because you'll end up committing that to your code. Um, so this is really dirty to do. So I don't ever recommend to do it. Um, if you wanted to have this apply to everything, you could put it up here. And so now when we call the client, we don't have to do it. Um, of course, if the they're loaded on the machine, you don't have to do it. The other thing is like, if you, if you want, you could load them in via environment variables. That's usually what you want to do. So you say AWS uh, access key, right? And then we say environment AWS access secret. And so you'd set those by doing, I think it's like an export um, environment variables set in Linux. You think I know after like 15 years of doing this, but I never remember. So you type in export. So you go down into, whoops, here you type in export. And you just say something like, I'm gonna just show an example to see if it works. So I'm gonna say, hello world. Okay, and if I do uh, hello like that, echo, see so it prints it out. So that's how you would set it. You'd set those there, but there's actually very specific ones that AWS uses for um, the API and it's these ones here. So you always wanna use those. Okay, so you put that in there and that in there. But of course, you know, like if they're already set in your machine, you don't have to even specify those because it would auto load those environment variables. I don't think they're set right now. If we type in echo, just take a look here. Is, are they gonna get auto loaded here? No. So, but anyway, so we could go here just as an example. And uh, well, actually they just show them right here. So you see your access key, but we go and we type in um, export and I'm going to paste the key in there and I'm going to go to the front of it and we type AWS access key ID equals enter. And so now if I did echo on this AWS access key ID, okay, it shows up, but I just want to show you how it can kind of vary and those conditions around it. So yeah, that is the AWS SDK. Um, and yeah, a lot of times you're just copying and pasting code and just kind of tweaking it. You're not really writing uh, real programming. Okay. So hopefully that is less intimidating. So I'm just going to close these off. And I want to close down this cloud nine environment. Um, I might have to reopen this up in another tab and go to the management console here and then go over to cloud nine and just close this tab. And then while well, go ahead as and delete this environment. Oops, I'll just type delete here. Even if you didn't, it would turn off after 30 minutes and you have that free tier. So it's not that big of a deal. It's up to you whether you want to use cloud nine or Git pods. Cloud9 is really good because it allows you to um, uh, it allows you to uh, uh, use it runs on a virtual machine, right? So you have a, a a container runtime there, and so it's very easy to run containers on it. Um, whereas in like I've had some issues with Git pods, but 
Um, yeah, those are the two, okay?